Between 1940 and 1944, nearly 43,000 inhabitants of Lutsch Ghetto died tragically at the hands of their Nazi captors. In an act of Jewish civil resistance, photographer Henrik Ross risked his being to document an intricate portrait of Lutsch Ghetto life. Despite the evil behind this unthinkable tragedy, the nearly 4,000 photographs Ross left behind prove that the human spirit can forever triumph. Henrik Ross's efforts to record the tragedy of the Jewish Holocaust began in 1939, when German Chancellor Adolf Hitler's army marched into Poland and captured the country. To control the Jews, the Nazis systematically rounded up Polish Jews and placed them in ghettos, fenced off from the world. In walled ghettos, Nazis could exploit Jewish labor, deepen the divide between Jews and non-Jews, and erode family bonds. These tactics dehumanized the Jews of Europe, branding them as inferior beings. On May 1st, 1940, the Lutsch Ghetto was officially formed when Nazis sealed it off from the rest of the city with barbed wire, sentry booths, and a German police patrol. Located in the poorest part of the city, Lutsch Ghetto had no sewer system, minimal running water, and terrible housing. Soon after the formation of the ghetto, the Jewish government hired photographer Henrik Ross to photograph the productivity of the ghetto workshops and take identification photos. Ross understood the tragic irony of being an accomplice of the Nazis against his own people. Any mistake he made could result in his death, yet once he saw the tragedy surrounding him, Ross knew he needed to document these evils. Ross's efforts to avoid detection by his Nazi captors were calculated. Instead of taking identification photos individually, Ross shot multiple photos at once and cut them out, leaving him with negatives to use for his own form of civil resistance. In his cloak, he would hide his camera, and with his wife as sentry, Ross would snap photos in quick succession then rehide the camera. Ross said, Having an official camera, I was able to capture the tragic period in the Lutsch Ghetto. I did it knowing that if I were caught, my family and I would be tortured and killed. Many of Ross's photographs capture the hunger and starvation that gripped the ghetto. Sarah Plager wrote in her Lodge Ghetto Diary, Our lives were divided into periods based on distribution of food. Each day fell into two parts, before and after we received our soup. In this way, time passed. An anonymous ghetto diarist echoed her despair. I bought rotten and stinking beets from a woman for 10 marks. We will cook half today and half tomorrow. Does this deserve to be called life? Ross also used his camera to document forced labor in the ghetto, where Jews toiled to the point of collapse. Lutsch survivor Eva Lebiski describes why labor was critical for survival. Lutsch's head of the Council of Elders, Chaim Romkowski, proposed that the ghetto become a manufacturing hub for Germany. Factories would churn out war material, as well as goods for civilians, and in return, the entire Jewish community would receive food and be allowed to live. Starvation, hard labor, unsanitary conditions, and the constant fear of deportation led to disease, all images caught by Ross's lens. Ghetto dwellers fought heart disease, typhus, tuberculosis, and dysentery at rates three times higher than before the war. The few hospitals that served the needs of the ill were quickly emptied. Survivor Joseph Zelkowitz recalls September 1, 1942, trucks pulled up at the ghetto hospitals and the patients were loaded aboard. Onlookers' eyes opened wide and puzzled questions poured forth from their mouths. Why are they throwing patients into the trucks like hunks of meat? Where are they taking them? No one answered these questions. The answer came on its own. Despite witnessing these daily tragedies, Ross looked for happier moments for his camera to capture, moments of triumph over the grim reminders of death. As Ross describes, images of happy, well-dressed people depict the continuation of life against all odds. The pictures reveal the persistence and disintegration of families, the resilience of love, and the ravages of deprivation and grief. 
Ross soon was faced with photographing another type of deprivation, the deportations to the death camps. Elder Rumkowski's address to parents in the ghetto was the consequence of the Germans' demand that 20,000 Jewish children be handed over for deportation. Rumkowski announced, They are asking us to give up the best we possess. I stretch out my hands and beg. Brothers and sisters, hand them over. Fathers and mothers, give me your children. Survivor Michael Kaczynski recalled, From the chests of thousands came poignant screams. Despair of mothers and fathers could almost be physically touched. On this day, the ghetto cried. From its every corner came laments to God. And so, in January of 1942, 15,681 people from the Luj ghetto were deported to the extermination camps in Chelmno and Auschwitz. Henrik Ross feared that he too would be deported or killed. With the help of his wife and friends, Ross buried his negatives, hoping they'd survive even if he did not. With Hitler's defeat and the end of World War II in sight, Soviet troops closed in on the ghetto to free the survivors. Nazi leaders ordered Lodz be liquidated, and most of the remaining Jews were sent to Auschwitz. Ross himself was not deported, as he was seen fit enough to assist in the cleanup efforts after the ghetto's liquidation. He was among just 877 who survived the four years of the ghetto. In total, just under 68,000 Jews were murdered there at the hands of the Nazis. After World War II ended, Ross made one final journey to where he had buried his negatives. The photos miraculously remained where he had hidden them, although some were damaged by water. Over the following years, Ross cataloged his photographs so they could be understood by generations to follow. From his post-war home in Israel, he circulated images showing the horrors of Luj and published a book entitled Luj Ghetto Album. This, however, would not be the end of Ross's efforts to triumph over the tragedies of the Luj Ghetto. In 1961, Ross was called to testify in the trial of Adolf Eichmann, a chief organizer of the Holocaust. He was captured in 1960 and placed on trial for his role in the Holocaust. At the trial, Ross used his powerful photos to testify against Eichmann. I heard the cries. I saw the beatings. I saw the shootings. I saw them being murdered. Due in part to Ross's testimony, Eichmann was found guilty of genocide, war crimes, and crimes against humanity, and sentenced to death. Many historians state the Eichmann trial as the time when the events of the Holocaust became embedded in public consciousness. Following Ross's death in 1991, his works were moved to the Art Gallery of Ontario, where they reside today. Curators there created a moving exhibit of Ross's work called Memory Unearthed. The exhibit shows some 200 indelible scenes of the Holocaust, creating an emotional reaction to a dark period in history. In evaluating the impact of Henrik Ross's work and its relationship to the theme of triumph and tragedy in history, we must understand that Ross played a significant role in the Jewish civil resistance. As the Jewish voice states, Ross's photographs ask us to acknowledge the complexity of life in the Luj ghetto, the suffering, the birthday parties and wedding celebrations, the violence written onto bodies, the shrinking of life to fit a constricted zone, and the human insistence on building relationships and maintaining a sense of normal life. Henrik Ross fought the Nazis' vision. He committed acts of resistance to create a photographic record of a range of human experiences from the perspective of a Jewish person deciding where to point his camera. It is that vision that is his triumph and a grim reminder to us all. Never allow such atrocities and injustices to occur again. <laughs>